setting up the camera the way you like it is really important. It makes photography easier and more fun. In this video I will show you how I would set the EM1 Mark III. Best settings for EM1 Mark III coming up. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. Now let's get right into the business. The EM1 Mark III that I have back there is a loan, is loaned from Olympus, Finland. I don't have one and that camera was loaned for the purpose that I can make this video about the best settings. Thanks Olympus Finland for making it possible. I will go through a menu by menu this this time. I tried this way to do this because I think it might be a good way to go from shooting menu 1 to all the way back to my menu. But let's start with shooting menu 1. I use picture mode muted and I have also tweaked the settings. I will have contrast on minus 2 and saturation minus 2. The reason why I use muted is because I want to have the best possible JPEG on my LCD and EVF for the perfect exposure. When I'm exposing I use the flag colors and histogram and these settings will make it possible to get the perfect exposure. And all my settings are for raw imaging which is also another thing that I choose from here. If you are a JPEG shooter then I have to give you a warning. Most likely everything that touches the uh, image quality or the, the way the image looks will affect your JPEG and it will make the JPEG looking worse. If you just shoot JPEG, most uh, likely the best settings are so that you leave all the image settings as it is from your camera. But of course, then the usability settings is a different thing. Those are the things that you might want to change. But if you're shooting, uh, shooting JPEG, then just leave the image settings as it is. But let's continue to shooting menu 2. From shooting menu 2, I do not change anything. This is a special uh, shooting scenarios. We have keystone, we have bracketing. I use only these settings when I need to use bracketing or live ND. So this one is like this. And then we will skip the video and the playback menus. This is all about best settings for photography. And then let's get into the custom menus. There are lots and lots of things you can tweak in the custom menus. And let's start with custom menu A1, which is all about autofocus. And this menu, I leave it as it is. There's nothing for me to change when I do my general photography. And the same goes with special menu A2 and A3. Everything is the way I want it or the way I like it them to be. And then from custom menu A4, I set up or turn on the magnification and focus speaking. I use manual focus quite a lot and these are really really helpful for me. But if you don't know, if you never use AF then you can just forget setting these up. But for me those are really important things. And then we get to the special menu B1 and there is a lot more to uh, tweak and change. The first thing is that I set up the ISO button to be the face selection. And this way I can press down the ISO button and turn the back wheel or the front wheel and I can choose which face the camera is uh, focusing to or tracking. And this is very useful if you have a lot of uh, people, a group photo or, or people walking around, it's easy to select which one the camera is uh, focusing on or tracking. And this, this is really important. Now, this is something new that the other cameras of or other Olympus cameras don't have. And all other buttons I will leave as they are. I don't really use those buttons that much. And those that I use are, you know, menu info and, and things like that. So that's, that's okay like that for me. But if you want to have certain things in different buttons, you can tweak them the way you want. And if, if you have any special needs for something to be on a certain button, let me know in the comments down below how you set up your buttons. But the dials are something that I do change. I will have the e exposure compensation on the back wheel and then I will change the aperture and shutter speed from the front wheel. That's because the way I like to shoot, I usually shoot aperture priority and exposure compensation is the most important thing how I control my exposure. That's because I use the flag colors and there is a video about the flag colors over here. If you haven't seen or know what the method is, is a, absolutely the best method to make your exposure. So I have exposure compensation on the back wheel because that's the most important thing for me when I 
uh, determine the exposure. And then if I need to change either the shutter speed on shutter priority or aperture priority, I will use the front wheel. The exposure compensation on the back wheel because then I can have always my finger on the shutter button. If something really happens fast, I'm all set for taking a photograph. And I like to use the F and lever switch for my power button. So that's the way I can turn on the camera with my one hand. If I'm holding the camera like this with the thumb, I can turn it on. I think that's a very good way. The, the sad thing is that then the power button on the, on the left is, there's no use for that. It'd be good if that button could be used for something, but unfortunately it's not. From custom menu B2, I turn the button that doesn't have any name, I turn it off. It's this button here. I do not need it. From custom menu C1, I don't change anything. No need for me to change anything for general shooting. And the same goes with special menu C2. From special menu D1, I have the highlight and shadow and histogram on from info settings. From LV info, I have the highlight, shadow and level gauge on from custom 1. From custom 2, I have histogram on. These are the things that I see on LCD. And if you want to change the things that you see on LCD, you have three different uh, combinations. Pressing the info button will change the info on the back of your LCD. From picture mode settings, I turn everything off except muted and monochrome. And then the neutral, I think is, or natural it's called, is always on, you cannot turn it off. I really don't need any other picture modes or the art filters. If you do use them, then you just turn on those that you really need because then you can access them faster from the super control panel. You don't see the others at all. And I think this is very good. If, if there is something that you don't need, then just turn it off from here. From sequential and self timer, I turn every option on. But if you don't need them, then you can just leave it as it is. From custom menu D2, I don't change anything. I don't need to change anything for my general shooting. And remember that if you do just general shooting, most of the settings that the camera has are okay. And if you, and as I said in the beginning, if you JPEG, there are many things that you do not need to change. But the most important thing, of course, are the buttons, so that those buttons are the way you want them to be. And then from custom menu D3, I will turn the grid color to be white. This will also change the focusing point to white. That's very helpful if you have very dark scene. But of course, if you're shooting in snow or very, very bright conditions, you might turn them black. You can, and you can choose any color you want. I prefer white because at least for, for this winter, we didn't have any snow this winter in Finland or at least in Helsinki. In Finland, in the northern part, yeah, there were, but not in Helsinki. From displayed grid, I use the one that is most close to a rule of thirds. I think this is the best one. This makes it easier to make the composition when you have the grid lines to help you. But there are several other options for you to choose from. But I like to use the one that is closest to rule of thirds. And then peaking settings can be changed from here. You can change the color and the intensity. I leave it as it is, as a default. The default color is red. But if I need to change this, this is the way and this is the place to change them. And then the histogram values, I use 254 and 1. This is important if you're using the flag colors. This will tell you where the flag colors will turn on. If, if the color tone or the value of the color is 255, it will be red on the screen either EVF or LCD. And if the color is pitch black, zero, then it will be blue. So then you know if some parts of the images or the, some part of the image is overexposed or underexposed. But you can tweak these. I use these values because most of my images are viewed online. I never or never, I would say never, but very seldom make images that will be printed. But if you shoot a lot of images that will be printed, then you might have something like 250 and 10 or eight. Then I turn the mode guide off. If I need to check what a certain uh, menu item is, I can always press the info to see the, the info, <laughs> info what, the, what the item is. And then pressing the info again, it will turn it off. This is a very handy way of, if you don't remember, for example, what a certain thing means or what it does, then just press the info button and then it will tell you. And that's a, that's a good feature to have. But I like to turn it off. I don't want them to be there all the time because it blocks the next or the previous menu item. It's, it's distracting, but pressing the info on and off, you will see what it is.
And from special menu D4, I turn off the beeping sound. I think the beeping, <laughs> beeping sound, not a beeping sound, it's a beeping sound is annoying. So I will turn it off. I don't need to have a sound when the camera is focusing. Maybe the only a place where that is, if you use a lot of self-timer and you're also in the picture, then it might be a good thing to have it on. But otherwise, I will turn it off for general shooting. I don't really need it. And everything else I will leave as it is from special menu D4. From special menu E1, I turn off the noise filter. Everything else I will leave as it is. I used to turn the noise uh, reduction also off, but I tend to like it to have it on auto. Then it will only apply noise reduction if the shutter speed is longer than four seconds and then it's usually needed. So I think that's a good good thing to have on auto. This is something that I've changed over the years because uh, actually I find it to be better when it's on auto. But if you don't want to have it, it will of course slow down your shooting because it will, if you have a five second uh, exposure, it will take five seconds to do the noise reduction. So it will slow down your shooting. And if you don't want that, then turn it off. From special menu E2, I only change one thing, and that is the bulb slash timer uh, display or monitor, and I will turn it to zero. The default is minus seven, and it will make the uh, LCD a lot darker, but I like to have it on zero, so it's bright and clear to see what I'm shooting, if I'm doing, for example, live composite images. And then special menus E3 and F, I leave everything the way it is. There is no need for me to change anything. From special menu G, I will turn off the warm color or to keep keep warm colors that it is. That's because uh, I like to have the best possible image on my LCD and EVF for perfect exposure. And that is better to turn off. You get a better reference image for, for your exposure. And I will use Adobe RGB. And that's because it will give me a better reference image for the perfect exposure. If you're shooting JPEG, then I would leave this to be uh, sRGB. That's a, a lot better for JPEGs. And then we are in special menu H1. The first one is card slot settings. These I usually leave as it is, but if I need to have backups and I have two cards, then I will have both of the cards record raw images. Now that I can use or, or I share and I can transfer raw images from my camera to, to my mobile if I need to. I will have both cards recording raw. I used to do so that if I needed to have images from the card to my mobile, I used JPEG on the other card. But now it's not necessary, as I said, because you can transfer raw images from the M1 Mark III. And if I had several M1 Mark III's, I would change the file name so that I can see which camera was used from the file name. I would you know, put a number E12, E13 or something like that, whatever, E11, E12, whatever you, you choose to do. But separate those camera files from each other is a wise thing to do if you, if you have two cameras and, and use them all the time. Simultaneously. Simultaneously. Yeah, that's the way. But at the same time, anyways, that's what I'm trying to say. And here you can also add your copyright settings. You can write your name and the copyright holder. And most likely it's the same person, you. And this is something that you can do, but it's actually not necessary if you use, for example, Lightroom. You can have a preset that will write the copyright and artist info in the file when you import the files. You can have a preset for that. That's what I usually use. But still, I have written this or have written my name on the, on the uh, co copyright info. And lens info settings is important. If you have vintage lenses, you need to record or store them here, the info of the focal length. And when you're using them, then just choose the lens from here and the IBIS knows what focal length you're using. If it's a vintage lens, the lens won't tell your camera to it. If it's not necessary, if you have dedicated micro four third lenses, then it's not needed. It can read it from the lens. But if you have lenses that do not send the info to the camera, then Set your lens here and choose it from here when you're using it. And from special menu H2, I do not need to change anything. Then to the special menu I. I like to turn the EVF auto switch off. But recently I have sometimes used it so that when I have my uh, LCD turned or the flippy screen turned away, I will have the uh, sensor to turn on the 
EVF automatically. When I lift the camera to my eye, it will turn on the EVF. And when I take it off, it will turn it off. Then I have the EVF style, either one or two. With the style three, all the info about your exposure is on the image, but I want to have it in bottom of the image so it doesn't block anything from the viewfinder. And then from info settings, I will turn on shadow highlight so that I can see the flag colors. And the rest can be as it is. And special menu J1 is also a place where I do not change anything. And then from special menu J2, I will turn the sleep time to three minutes. I think the default one minute is a bit too fast. The rest can be as it is. And from the setup menu, you don't need to change anything unless you want to change the language. And also here is the rec view, which tells you how long your image will be shown after you've taken it. And then we are in the last menu item, my menu. Here I store everything that I need that are not in the super control panel. I think that's the best way to use my menu. This way you have the fastest access, all the stuff that you need to change during your shooting. It's really easy to set a menu item to my menu. You go to the menu item you want to set to or store into the my menu and then press record button and then choose which page you want it to be. You have five different options and seven on each page. So you have 35 menu items possible to store in my menu. And after you have set up everything, remember to store your settings to custom settings. And also remember to store them in your computer. You can use Olympus Workspace for that. It's really easy. Let me show you how. Connect your camera to your computer, choose storage, go to camera, custom settings, save, and latest settings and all my settings. And then you can choose where, saving latest settings and my sets. And you don't want to turn your camera off when it's storing those. And then you just press close. Now everything is set up. And then when you want to load them, you have your camera on and you go and load. And it will open the digital camera updater again. And it's connecting to the camera. Will be loaded, load from file and then then you need to select the file, camera settings. That one is for Mark III. And you will load these settings back. And if something goes wrong with your settings, you can always load them from your computer. And it's very important to load them to your computer because some of the firmware updates will reset the whole camera. And this way you can load them from the computer and you do not have to uh, do everything manually again. Because as you saw in this video, there's lot, lots and lots of things you can adjust to your likings. I hope this video was helpful for you to set your EM1 Mark III. Thanks for watching and bye for now.